until some years ago, the Hayes Group embarked on a study to really look into leaders and how self-aware they are. And this study included about 17,000 participants. And what they found, what the researchers found was that of those 17,000 leaders, what they found is that the majority of them believe themselves to be self-aware, right? It's no different than most of us. If you ask me, am I self-aware? If I ask you, are you self-aware? Of course, the answer is probably yes, because we all believe that we know ourselves. Here's what this 17,000 uh, person study showed that was conducted by the Hayes Group. What it showed is that only approximately 19% of women executives uh, exhibited self-awareness and only 4% of their male counterparts showed self-awareness. Now, I don't know about you, but when I heard that number, I was floored. I thought, okay, I recognize that many of us don't exactly know how we show up and we're not always in tune to that. But to say overall only 10% of leaders are self-aware is a shocking number. And I think it's one that bears discussion. So self-awareness is the ability to be introspective and to recognize and truly understand yourself. Now that sounds good at a very high level, but when we say understand yourself, we're talking about something much deeper. We're talking about understanding your thoughts, your emotions, your triggers, your belief, your habits, your characteristics, it's all of that. And it's recognizing also about how your mental and emotional state impacts your behavior and therefore impacts the others around you. So self-awareness is not just about knowing yourself. It's also about your ability to recognize your impact on the world around you. There are two main aspects of self-awareness that I want you to think about. The first is self-knowledge. And this is where we talk about having that understanding of self, knowing your habits, your personality traits, your values, your weaknesses. I like to ask this question. If I were to, let's say, speak to someone who knows you without you in the room, how would they describe you? And would that be the same way that you describe yourself or pretty similar, not exact, this is not an exact science. And so when we talk about self-awareness, that's what we're talking about. I cannot tell you the number of times I have talked to employees or other colleagues and they describe a totally different person than how that person perceives themselves. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about closing the self-awareness gap. The other part, aside from self-knowledge, the, the second part of self-awareness is self-reflection. This is your ability to be able to step back and objectively reflect on those habits, traits, behaviors, your emotions, your triggers, right? It's your ability to objectively take a look at yourself almost as if you were standing outside of yourself and peering in through the window. And to, to be able to gain insight from that in a non-judgmental way. One of the conversations I frequently have with clients when we're talking about this pattern and intentionally developing self-awareness, it is, this is not about beating yourself up. This is about not about talking about how bad you are or how good you are. This is an objective view you're gathering data. It's about holding on and gaining information that then you can decide how you want to use.